Not right off the bat. Going live. My, my phone's on do not disturb. Okay, and the volume's down? And, and the volume's down. I'm not watching the thing. Well, this is how I get my questions because I can't read that. Yeah, I hear you. So let's see. There, there. Bebop out of that. We're there. Is it there? All right, everybody. Welcome to the show this week. It is a very special one as it is Christmas time. Merry Christmas. So almost as cool as the Ellen DeGeneres show, we're going to be giving... One person something this evening, and you're going to have to work for it. So we want to jump right in and kind of explain that, because a lot of people were asking, how do I win stuff? How is this going to work? Come on, give me the deets. And we are trying to come up with a better way of doing some of these giveaways and trivia and things like that, which we've found ways that work and ways that don't. And we are going to be using an email address. Yeah, this is a little note out of old Gary V's book. I was watching, um, watching, listening to a podcast live that he did. And he said, uh, producer, which we don't happen to have one yet. I'm working on it. We're working really hard. We said, hey, create, create me an email address real quick over there. And we'll allow people to. So I did that. that. Really quick ahead of time. We did that. <laughs> yeah, we, we did that really quick ahead of time. And what is that email address? Yawa. 47 giveaway which it's yawa episode 47 and then this is the give away all right and what's your and that's at, at gmail.com yep at gmail.com perfect all right and what we're going to be able to do with this folks i'm going to go ahead and throw that in as a comment pin it to the top for a little bit so everybody can see that while we're waiting on that, what I would love for everybody that is tuning in here to do is let's get some check-in going. If this is your first Yawa, if this is your first time, even if it's not your first time, folks, we want to know where everybody is from tonight, uh, who is watching today, this morning, on the way to work, listening, whatever you're doing, throw in a quick comment as a check-in. And if you are driving on your way to work, make sure to use like voice to text or Siri or something. Heck yeah, we don't <laughs> condone texting and driving. Um, uh, representing here, we have the ugly sweater edition of this. Let's get. I don't necessarily approve, but it Heck was yeah. literally the only Christmas sweater he has. It's so. a it's a reindeer. What are you doing? Menage, there? Menage, oh, scoot my chair up a little. Menage mm. a trois. Yeah. And I'm just festive. So. Festive. Everybody loves festive. What do we got people tuning in from? We have people from, let me see. Got to get to the tune ins. We had people checking in early again, asking questions and stuff already. So let me get to some of the check ins. We're going to play a little bit of this tonight. Dun, dun, people dun, are dun, dun, excited dun, 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 dun. about your bourbons. They're getting their bourbon out ready Ooh, for. Uh, Hi from Minnesota, from Melanie Carlson. All snowed in with a blizzard, raging outside. Had my bullet bourbon with some Aperol tonight. When I'm all grown up, I'll be a purist like Ethan and drink it up. <laughs> um, same, I'm in Minnesota, five inches of snow, and lake's not quite ready for fishing from Nell Leah. The snow, I'm not going to lie, the snow sounds a little horrible. We've been there, done that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. uh, Sarah Lucas, hi from central Pennsylvania. James Schick says, Windy Wyoming, checking in. Merry Christmas to all. Heck yeah. Hey, James, how's it going? Lots of Minnesotans. Hutchinson, Minnesota. You say that. They say Minnesota. Another I just tease because we used to actually live there. Yeah, so, so we can tease. Uh, Zach Hikes, Central Pennsylvania here as well. We got a lot of Northeast people. I dig it. Thanks for tuning in. Columbus, Ohio from Finish Line Engravers, No Limits Running Company, a balmy 55. Heck yeah. 
It's about what we had today uh, until I woke up with some weather that was nicer like that. I think uh, we started in the It was decent 40s. out this morning, and it just dropped right off there, Oh, my sir. goodness, yeah. We had uh, one of those beautiful, windy Kansas days. I think we were gusts up to 50, and we were supposed to attempt to shoot another clutch video today, and I went, I'm Too not windy. fighting this wind. I mean, it's going to blow the dang camera over, so... Yeah. We just uh, postponed that till tomorrow. It's supposed to be pretty much gorgeous, I believe. We've got Denise Steele from Central Florida, hey. Hitchcock, South Dakota, Tyler Bolin. Um, uh, Spokane, Washington, Jeremy oh, yeah. Payne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. California, El, Al Palafox, Pennsylvania again from Dark Whiskey. And Merry for those Christmas from that Wisconsin. just tune in for the bourbon tonight, special occasion, we'll be sipping on some Blantons. This is uh, the old horse racer, um, one of my original favorites, and one that I still enjoy on the regular, even though we have branched out from before I used to be like, oh, this is the only thing I want to drink. Now there's lots of options, but this one's still, still up there at the top of the list. Yes. Big fan. I know it is. Big fan. I'm actually enjoying a nice cup of tea this evening. Cup of tea. Uh, gotta love constant comment. But I am drinking it in a festive Christmas mug with a cute little fox on it. I absolutely love coffee mugs. I love original, unique coffee mugs. And my cupboards are literally overflowing. And I have it's to cycle insane. them through yeah, and exchange insane. some of the older ones for some new ones. And then it's like, bring out some of the old ones and they're new again. But yeah. I like it. We have a, a couple things I just want to touch on again, because I saw that we have a few more people. Oh, we have a few more people bopped in here. And I want to make sure that everybody is aware that is listening and everything else. Um, that pin at the top, that's an email address. It is yawa47giveaway at gmail.com. Oh, and I actually have a typo in it. <laughs> oh, goodness. Let fix me your fix. typo. Um, can I remove? I'll remove it. And then retype and it. Retype. And then pin it. <laughs> okay. So yawa47giveaway at gmail.com is how you're going to enter into this evening's contest. And that was what we posted in that picture. It's the thumbnail. And what you guys are looking at is a hat. Standings don't have your choice. You can use the black tuxedo. Uh, America Classic, that's the one we showed the picture, uh, or any of the other options. A uh, bag of Nutra Chomps, which are fantastic chews for your dogs. A DT Systems Wrap 1400 collar. I can't reach any of the more the rest of the stuff. But cats. I'm hoarding it. Yeah, that's right, baby. Uh, Wrap 1400 e collar. Thank you, DT Systems, for being awesome and making great products. And then uh, some of our own personal products here. We've got the easy lead and flat collar combo. Again, you can change out the choice. color. Yep. yep. And then last but not least, so you can be representing uh, Standing Stones. This is the Big Frig branded tumblers. They're absolutely awesome. Um, they feel good in your hand. They got a cool finish on them. It's just a little different. It's got some just baby texture that's uh, nice to hold on to. So really non -slip nice grip. non slip grip and a slider top. Rock and roll. So this is it. All of the colorable, colorables are variables. Uh, you can pick any dang color you want. All right, folks. Whoever the winner is, what this is going to be this evening is trivia. And all you have to do is send an email to yawa47giveaway at gmail.com with the answers. We're going to do a majority of it at the end. We may we're, throw we're in. We're taking notes as we come up with what got, we want our trivia to be. Yep, we have a couple pre Yawa uh, questions labeled out here, and then we're going to have some uh, during Yawa questions. So it means you got to tune in, you got to pay attention, you got to watch the whole time. And then as we bop around here, um, we're going to jump right into some question answering and tell some stories and have some fun sipping on some drinks and hanging out with y'all. Um, I do want to say, if this is your first time to the channel, this is the first video or podcast that you're finding, definitely give us a subscription, please. We appreciate it. Um, hitting that subscribe button or subscribing to the podcast would be fantastic. And then um, if you are here and feel uh, like you want to, saying thanks to a patron is an awesome thing to do. Or if you want to say thanks for the content, become a patron yourself. 
We are. We have a goal of hitting 500. Um, by the end of the year. By the end of the year, and that I don't believe is going to happen. Uh, we might get close. We're at 377 right now. We teeter kind of up and down, and as we go, um, any jumping, that would be fantastic. But uh, Four minutes ago, 380. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> whoop, whoop. So 120 to get to our goal by the end of the year. might have been set a little bit high. Nonetheless... Um, we do appreciate all the money that comes through that account from patrons. Is It goes directly back into producing this content, whether that's equipment or uh, video editing or any Which of the I, stuff. I These giveaway to, things, all of this happens directly through that Patreon I account. just have to give a little spoiler and toot my own horn all at the same time. Uh, what are you talking about? We have a new video coming out. Oh, heck yeah. With Covey. Which, if you've been following along with mm-hmm. um, what we've been doing with her. But the really cool part is, I'm sure if you haven't seen one of the videos of us in the field, you can easily find one of those videos. Yeah. And it's basically the Blair Witch Project because it's Well, you'd really... have to call it the Cat Witch Project because cats yeah, do the I'm usually the, the filmer. Mm-hmm. But it is really difficult to try and stay stable this as possible. This sweater's got me feeling a little balmy. I'm going to crack this door. Okay. Um, and the lights that we've got really warm it up in here usually quite a bit. But, um, so it's hard to walk through the field through thick cover, uneven ground, and watching the tiny little screen to make sure everything's still in focus and happening on screen. And it gets a little jumbly and jarring to watch. And we've had multiple, 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 multiple comments that, hey, you should get a gimbal. So we did. And we used it in the last part of that video that's mm-hmm. going to be coming out here, I believe, the end of the week. Yeah, so you're going to see a progression and the video stability, if you will, as it goes yeah. along. And I feel like I did pretty good for the first time using it. It's a fairly heavy piece of equipment, too, so uh, long field sessions get a little tiresome to hold on to it. But we rigged up a cool little harness system, and it worked pretty decent. And Kat doesn't even know this. This is a surprise and news to her. I had the opportunity, because we had an extra little... And um, I got a... It's called. It's a Steadicam branded oh. harness. So you wear it as a suit. And it straps here and straps here. And then has a support arm that comes out. And then the gimbal sits in it. So it helps with that X axis, which the only thing you're going to see is everything's really smooth and really nice in that video, but it's got a little bit of just movement with your body. While I'm walking. Mm -hmm. And this is supposed to help eliminate that a little bit. And so you're getting even more steady as you go. And it gives you that extra support arm so that you can watch what's going on. That's cool. Didn't you? Yeah. (laughs) Again, um, all we need to say, thanks for everybody for the support. And we appreciate y'all. Let's get into answering a few questions this evening. Okay. Well, I wanted to quickly answer this question because we had someone message us that they weren't going to be available for the live Yawa because it is at 3.30 a.m. where they're from Ah, in their time zone. So they're like, "Uh." but I really have a question that I'd like answered. So I said, hey, we'll do that for you, Justin. J Hill underscore four from Instagram, which most of our questions are coming from the YouTube live right now, but I made an exception for this guy since he didn't want to be up at 3.30 in the morning. He asked really nicely. Yeah. So I see recommendations for DT systems launchers on your website. I know these tools are primarily used for pointing dogs during their training, but can these be utilized for flushers retrievers in the upland scene? And if so, how? So that's the thing here. So I would say from a flusher, I would love to set you up, buddy, Justin, with some bird launchers. But if you are working on a flushing dog, there's going to be better tools out there for you. Um, One of which is just quality birds. Uh, Putting that bird in the grass, bringing your dog into it is about, the bird's going to take care of the rest. You know, you want the dog to be able to get in there and have that opportunity. And if the dog catches the bird in your situation, that's only going to build more drive and desire to try and catch the next one. So, Which is ultimately what they're doing when they're flushing, trying mm-hmm, to catch the trying bird. Trying to catch them. So that in that specific situation, from a flushing standpoint, I would say not overly beneficial. Especially because 
the timing when using launchers is so important. Engaging when your dog catches scent and everything. Mm -hmm. And if you're flushing dog, which they're not supposed to hesitate, they're not supposed to stop like a pointing dog, um, gets too close and you have poor timing, you could accidentally hit them in the face with the launcher and cause some apprehension or, uh, you know, association with a bird and a bad situation. And we definitely wouldn't want that to happen. I would say that there is a greater chance of causing issues with the flushing than actually helping things get better or preventing, you know, whatever. There's there's more takeaway than there's add with uh, bird launchers in a flushing environment. Now, from a retrieving standpoint, that's a whole different story. Those bird launchers are designed to throw, I mean, they got a pretty dang good catapult to them. And if you were to set up either multiple of them or additional of them with streamers or attention getters when you're working on extending marks or lines and you don't have someone to help you utilizing that remote uh, feature there's a couple different remote products that dt has that can all work together on one remote for you Um, that would be the dt systems remote dummy launcher and the next would be those um, remote bird launchers and you can actually in the basket you can put it puts the bumper in the basket you can uh, you can put different objects in there to be able to add a timely spot, throw them up in the air and pull attention to continue that driving aspect uh, when you're trying to extend that or build confidence with a young dog. So in that situation, it's fantastic. You set your remote dummy launcher up, you know, hey, 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 Mark, here comes the bird, it comes down. And you set it up, you have to do a little prep work, but it comes out right in, sorry, baby. I'm talking with my hands here. I'm trying to itch my eye. About lost an eye. It comes out right about where your bird launchers are going to be set up or close to where it's close enough. And then if your dog needs a little bit of help, a little confidence booster with that drive, you can launch a bird launcher and then here comes another bumper. They throw them six, eight, ten feet in the air depending on exactly what you're using. And then you could throw another one and then another one if you need to help that dog to excel. So... That's a, that would be a good option there from a flushing standpoint, not so much. The retrieving standpoint, there is definitely some good usage. Agreed. Good question. So this is a good question from Isherman. Tips for day crate training while working from home. Nighttime is fine. And I think that this is a really good question and a one question. that has uh-huh. become a lot more prevalent in the few the few last months Mm -hmm. because there are a lot of people that are working from home that haven't had that opportunity in the past and it's definitely driving a lot of questions that we're getting from our patrons and other people like you on a regular basis i would say one of the most common questions that we've gotten recently is related to crate training crate training and what do we do about the barking while our puppy is at home with us while we're at home all day working Yes. So there's a lot of things that you can try. We Lots. have a video out there. Um, we have a couple videos out there, but the one I'm thinking of specifically is like tips and tricks for crate training. And all of those things can be utilized not only during nighttime crate training, but daytime crate training as well. So uh, things like trying to cover the crate with a towel or a blanket to create a nice enclosed space, giving extra special chew toys or chew bones while they're just in their crate, um, having the crate near you or having the crate away from you. Things like that um, just vary depending on the puppy. Some puppies do well right next to you. Some people say that their puppies do better in a back room where they can't hear and see what's going on and feel like that FOMO is happening. Um, But then ultimately, I think that it's really important to mention that puppies need a lot of stimulation as well. They need training time, They need time to mentally exercise their brains. They need time to physically exercise their bodies. So yes, you're at work, but we need to make sure that we're giving that puppy plenty of time first thing in the morning prior to crate training happening. And then middle of the day, getting puppy out, going potty, doing a little bit of out free time. And then again in the evening, making sure that we're really working on things to help mentally exhaust our puppy and physically exhaust them as well so that they are ready to spend that time in the crate. You know, if you've got a stir crazy puppy that hasn't done anything all day or for the last few days because they only get out on the weekends to really burn off any puppy energy, 
you're probably going to run into a puppy that's vocalizing a little bit because they're just wound up and they haven't had a way to get rid of some of that puppy energy. That's exactly it. I, I think it's overlooked that the puppies need that level of exercise. But then when you move into the next aspect of that, um, it's crate placement. Right? Yes. So you've got a dog that is needy. Some dogs want to be right next to you. Other dogs want to be, you know, kind of need that calm or that separation or that time alone. So you create them in the back closet where it's dark and... I mentioned that already. Oh, God. Okay. (laughs) I said some puppies do well next to you. Some puppies do well away from you because they have FOMO. You nailed it. I was looking for the next question. I was like... I was like, this sounds really familiar. Like, I literally just said this. It's almost like an echo. (laughs) God dang. You nailed it. Thanks. Thanks, babe. Um, Did you have a question ready then that you were looking at? No. Okay. It's really hard to follow on some of these. I get lost on where I was just at. Let's see. Here. Okay, someone asked, can you let us know how to enter the giveaway again? So, we haven't asked a trivia question yet, but you will be sending those answers. Don't comment them here in the thread, in the comments, because it's going to get lost. Correct. It's too hard to follow along with, which we found out in the previous trials of doing this. But you are going to email your answers to yawa 47 giveaway at gmail.com. I pinned that email address to the top of the conversation, to the top of the video, something like that. So you should be seeing that pop up. I did have a typo in the beginning, but I switched that. So hopefully everybody's seen the new one. Obviously I had a, I don't know. I had a, think I had a C in there instead of the V. So if I, it should be giveaway, not gick, gick away. Or geis, geis away, geis away. I don't know. Somebody else piped in, said it's one thirty-eight in the morning here, baby. Oh wow! Thanks for being dedicated. Absolutely. We got uh, love blends. It's been hard to find in Kentucky. Yeah, one thirty-eight in England. Thanks for tuning in. That's crazy, Joe. I'm also in England. That's awesome. All right, it says two questions here. Uh, my GSP is coming from Europe in a couple days. Best. Um, best tip for this situation, question mark. Uh, it says also tell me your best, um, Amazon rye recommendation. I don't know what that means. (laughs) And I have a question for you because you are getting your puppy from Europe or you said dog. My question is GSP. It says GSP coming from Europe. Yes, darling, but was it puppy or dog? Are you getting an eight-week-old puppy, or are you getting a 12-week-old puppy, or are you getting mm. a year-old dog? Yes, Rodrigo, Please throw us back some info about what is coming from Europe. Also, and what is Amazon rye? I'm not sure. So, Is that a type of food? Okay, mm. next. Kyle wanted to know, do we send all the answers in one email or separate them out? One email, please. I will not be able to keep track of all your... You send... Yeah, you send one email. That's your entry. Number the questions. One through however many we come up with. Probably three to five. All right. It says um, here... I saw one. Ah, this one says being a Patreon member is very helpful. Uh, Getting feedback on training on the regular. Speaking of that, we do... Um, look at those Patreon messages and review videos and do, I did a, uh, a live, um, a live chat today working with somebody who's having some issues with a little bit of, uh, anxiety slash apprehension of a new rescue dog. And we started working through kind of the process to help work through that. Um, it's going to take a little bit, you know, but being able to see that firsthand allows us to really be able to help you better. Ooh, what does that mean? This just happened. What does that say? Hey, we got our first super chat. That's what that means. Woo, woo, that is awesome. Awesome, Richard. Rock and roll. It says, uh, how late is too late to start formal training 
with a cocker? Uh huh. So that's a good question, and you can always teach an old dog new tricks. That's a it's a it's a prime example of the the new series that we're doing right now. That's not with, with a cocker, but it is with a English setter, and she's what coming on three. Yep, she's two and a half. Yeah. So she has had a slow formal start to say. Um, Ron hasn't done a ton of formal work with her, has taken her hunting, and Covey's had developed some bad habits. And so now we have a little bit older dog in that we are working through some of those bad habits with and fixing the problems that he has with her. So we're creating a series about that process. But I would say, um, you know, you can always teach an old dog new tricks. That's something that we always say. But it just sometimes takes longer to get there. Um, a dog that has a lot of maybe bad habits needs to learn the right way to do things and overcoming those bad habits, especially if they've been really ingrained and really conditioned can take a lot of time to overcome. Uh, the other thing is we've worked with dogs that are like nine years old before. We did. We got a nine year old in for training. Um, super, super sweet dog. Absolutely fantastic. And, and what she'd she had needed, some hunting experience, but, a she lot needed, of hunting experience. but she needed a lot of polishing in the formal mm-hmm. aspect of things with woe training and, and brace work and things like that. What ended up happening with that is they, they had sent their puppies to us for training. And those puppies, they actually said, um, they, they are better behaved now and do a better job than mama. And we would really like mama to be able to do something. Do you think you can work with her? So all we did with the, the little bit older dog in that situation was put a little more um, handle with some obedience, collar conditioning, and a little more polish on the field work. You know, not super extensive stuff because she had so much experience, but yeah. definitely could. So how old is too old? I would say um, dead would be too old. And then... You know, optimal time comes back into it, changes a little bit from breed to breed, but somewhere um, here at the facility, we take dogs in anywhere after six months old, a um, little bit slower to mature dogs, like a lot of uh, setters can be, some of the other versatile breeds can be. We're looking at closer to that 10 to 12 month range, but as far as how old is too old, really uh, no age is too old. The, the thing that you run into though is the older the dog is, the more things we have to kind of uncondition, you know, maybe bad habits that were developed from not having proper training in the beginning. Yep. It's a great question. Great question. And we have another super chat. So going to have to answer that one next. This one's from Tyler. Looking at running my four-year-old GSP in the Navda utility test this spring, what's mm. the hardest thing to prepare for? And this is a great question because... It really depends. That super chat thing makes it really easy to find them. Yeah, they're right at the top in bright, bright colors. So every, first of all, the Navda utility test is a more advanced level of testing through the Navda testing system. Uh, There's a field portion. There's a duck search portion. There's a healing course. There's a duck drag. um, And there's a study by blind portion. So there's uh, a lot of different parts of the test. And people ask, what's the hardest part? Or that's what Tyler asked, what's the hardest part to prepare for? And every dog is different. And that's why there's no cut and dry answer. Some dogs are really naturally steady bird dogs. So the field portion is probably going to come a little more naturally and more easy for them. Um, Some dogs are super prey driven, have great water love. So the duck search is going to be very natural and easy for them because they're just independent and they want to go out and they want to search and they want to find that duck. Um, some dogs are a little pushier, so they may actually struggle with the healing course and the steady by the blind portion where they needed to stay steady out of sight of the handler. Um, and then some dogs just know when mom and dad aren't watching that they can be naughty. Mm-hmm. So they go for the duck drag and they go, huh, nobody's around. I got this duck here. Maybe I'll just eat it today. So it can, there can be pitfalls in any portion of the test. Uh, An example, which it's not the utility test, but it's the invitational. So it's the next level of testing in Navda system after you get through utility. If you get a prize one, you can get invited to the invitational, which is held once a year. And if your dog passes, they become a versatile champion. So Nix has had the opportunity to go to the invitational twice. 
He is a two-time invitational flunky, we like to call him, which I love my dog. We did a lot of training, a lot of prep, and a lot of learning in this process. But the first year, he did not complete the blind, which is he has to cross approximately just under 200 yards of open water, no mark. I send him, he has to cross that, go up on shore, pick up a duck, and return to me to hand and present the duck. So he didn't do that. He got sucked into the wind and wanted to search because he's been a very natural duck searching dog. The next year we went, he did not complete the field portion of the test. He was just a little too unsteady that Oh, he completed the field portion. He just did it his own way. That's for sure. <laughs> Anytime he was up over a hill out of sight, the grass was wet, first brace of the morning, the birds were wet, and my smarty pants Nixie found out he could just remove that middle portion of the flushing and the shooting of the bird, and he could just bring me this bird back because it wasn't going to fly away. These dumb pen-raised birds could easily mm-hmm. be snatched. So if I was within sight of him did everything great. If I wasn't, he's like, well, I'm just going to quicken this up a little bit. So he actually made a mistake in two different parts of the test. Um, just showing that even though you think that your dog is going to do well in a certain area, they could potentially have a bad hair day, if you will, and have a poor part of another part of the test. So it depends on your dog. Yeah, it does. Sorry if that's a cop cop out answer. No, it doesn't. And I would say that I hear more often than not, and this would not, you know, it goes hand in hand with testing in general because we hear this at the AKC, you know, senior master level too. It's a little different test, but um, does take a little bit extra. And what we see there is that whatever you think you've got in the bag is usually what sneaks up to bite you on test day. So prepare properly for everything. That would be, that would be the thing for me. It's like, never seen them do that before. You know, it's what, whatever you think you got in the bag, that's what you end up struggling with that day. Yeah. And it's just one of those things that dogs aren't machines. So they're going to have bad days, unpredictable situations, and things are just going to happen. So that's what makes it so exciting. I like it. It's a great question. This is uh, maybe a question or a request from Ryan McManus. I need a standing stone Glen Cairn glass for my Buffalo Trace. Ooh, we could probably make that happen. We don't have them yet, but hey, why not, right? I think we could do that. It's, uh, it's one thing that I've been attempting to dabble in. So, hand me, oh, it doesn't have that on there. <sighs> what are you looking for? Um, so, we've got right now, if you've looked at some of our specific flat collar products is they have a stainless steel plate on them. That's what I was saying. Yeah. It doesn't have the plate on it. So it has a stainless steel plate on it. It's completely customized to you within the reasons of the machine and the space we have on the tag, which is 18 characters per line and a majority of things. Now we could drastically increase the amount of, um, space and lettering and, and creative, uh, Oh, what's the word? Uh, We could make it drastically cooler if we had a laser, but there's a couple different types of lasers out there. There's um, a fiber laser, and fiber lasers are designed to cut stuff, and that's what we need to actually cut into the stainless steel tag to make an indention and to do that. Then there is a CO2 laser, and the CO2 laser is what typically does things like etches glass or cuts the coating off of those cups and does stuff like that. So they're two entirely different machines, both fairly expensive if you get a quality one. And that would be something that I would think would be really cool. I just wish I could get one. One machine would do the tags. One machine would do things so that we could make one little. Machine one to machine rule to them rule all. them all. Um, we would put little, you know, etching logos and different stuff on things. I, I think that would be an absolutely cool Agreed. A little addition to stuff. Unless anybody knows of a solution out there that I'm missing. Well, I know you can hire places to do that. Yeah, I'm talking about to solve my problem, which is these tags. That's what I'm thinking about. Ah, okay. Uh If you know more about lasers than I do, come on now. I just know there's a quote about that. One ring to rule them all. No, laser. Laser. And I've never even seen that movie. Laser beam. I've never even seen that movie. 
<sighs> yeah, I know all the little things from it <laughs> because I'm married to you, but I have not seen it. What what movie haven't you seen? Which movie haven't I seen? Uh huh. Um. Okay, this is a good one. Al Palafox. What age do you recommend beginning heel training? And I'm I'm bringing this one up because I've seen it kind of in a few of the other comments. So, um, already this evening about healing and what age do you start? And my recommendation is if you're planning oh, on. By having, the way, that was another super chat. That's the easiest yeah. way to freaking find this. Yeah, there it pops easy. them right up, right up on top. Um, pins it to the top for a certain amount of time at least. Yeah, depending on how much, I believe it's based on the amount of dollars you spend. But, so, what I was saying, Al, is if you're planning on hunting with your dog and you want them to be comfortable searching, we definitely don't want to put a ton of emphasis on healing prior to them becoming bold, confident, and getting out and searching. Uh, We want them to feel comfortable getting away from us, being productive in the field. And if we put too much emphasis on healing and being right stuck to our side, uh, they're not going to feel as comfortable and confident getting away from us. Typically, my general answer is around five months. Obviously, people that live in town have to work on healing or walking their dog, at least on leash, um, to go out and go for walks and go to the bathroom and things like that. And you do have to kind of play a balancing act with that situation. I had a really good one in here about uh, collars. Okay, I got another one before you're, because you don't know where you're at. From Edgar Audello, I think. Sorry if I butchered your name. Top three commands for a gun dog to learn. And I'm going to throw in there that we like to use cues instead of commands. But Why? 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 Because we try and take a really positive outlook and mentality about training. And if you can think positively, it affects the way that you actually present that training to the dog. So if you're thinking about commanding, forcing, and breaking your dog, it's already kind of like getting you in this mindset of, well, gall darn it, if this dog doesn't do what I command it to do, I'm going to force it to, you know, and we don't necessarily want to take that approach. We want to take a more conditioning, helping, learning, developing approach. So mm-hmm. we're cueing the dog to do a behavior that we have shown it it can get rewarded for. And teaching them. Yes. Yep. So um, now you said gun dog. What would that? So I'm, I'm still going to say, Recall would probably be one of my number one cues that I want a dog to be able to do before they are um, good to go in the field for sure. Because I definitely want my dog to come back. Or if we're getting into a potentially dangerous situation approaching a roadway or a dog's on, a, you know, off game chasing a deer and I need to get him back so they don't get lost. Recall, recall, recall. What about you? What's your next cue? We got to come up with three, the top three. Um, uh, place training. Okay. That's a big one. I like it. No explanation needed, apparently. None. None. I mean, it, 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 it speaks for itself. Okay. And what would you say? I don't know. There's, I would say the rest kind of are even. There, there's a time and a place for a lot of the other cues. Like healing is not a bad one because it keeps your dog safe and under control prior to being ready to hit the field hunting. Um, you know, fetch would be a good one. It's, it's a tough one to just narrow it down to three. Probably high five. Be the next on the level <laughs> high of five. importance. Play high dead. five. High <laughs> five. <laughs> okay. All right, we've got another question here. It's uh, Anthony Oliver. Oliver? Oh, Oliver. Oh, oh, what? Olivera. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Olivera. I don't I know how to pronounce this. It says, uh, Yawa question. Hey, Kat and Ethan. Hey. Have a four-month-old GWP, and for those of you that don't know, that would be probably a German wire-haired pointer. I have started e-collar training, but wondered how do I make sure that my dog doesn't get 
collar smart still listening without um, the e collar smart um, so it's a really good one and it's something that a lot of people ask about and have some pretty common misconceptions I would say a lot of people start with oh I'm gonna put this collar on the dog and I'm gonna let them wear it for a week or two or five or whatever they're doing so they can get used to it and not think that it has anything to do with what's going on and then they won't know and they won't get collar smart and I'm going to tell you right now, collar smartness comes almost exclusively from inconsistency. Basically, if you are inconsistent in your training, you are going to open up the door for teaching the dog when they have to listen and when they can get away with not listening, basically. So what we recommend doing through the development stage and the exploring and the puppy and the learning stage Um, you've got to be as consistent as possible and set the dogs up for success and don't things that you can't. um. So if you're going to be in an area that you don't have the e-collar, maybe at least your check cord's important. Don't let them run and start hollering at them to come back when you know you can't get to them. So it's different things like that. It's more of a, the more that you use the collar, the more consistent you are in the beginning, the better off. Then you're going to make a switch. So when we start, if you're following along with our program, We utilize vibrate, turn the vibrate on, ask for the cue, you shut it off. That's negative reinforcement um, based on the specific timing. Then once the dog gets better, you're going to ask for the cue. They don't respond. Then comes the collar. That's positive punishment because you're adding the the collar in the form of punishment to try and diminish that behavior of not listening, basically ignoring you at that point in time. So once you get into that, Then you can teach the the dog how to avoid the e-collar altogether by complying the first time you ask. But you still need the e-collar on the dog so that you can utilize positive punishment as well. Yep. Now, eventually, um, a lot of people have this, you know, mindset of I've got to get to some point where my dog can handle without the collar. My question is, why? Well, what's the, the point in that exactly? And... Um, for some people, you know, whatever it is. Now, when we go to advanced levels of testing, you're not allowed to use collars, so we have to prepare the dogs for that. And how we do that is by utilizing positive punishment, allowing them to only receive any form of correction or, uh, you know, assistance basically in that matter when they've made the mistake. And then um, you have to move away from the collar handling and then move into verbal or physical handling so they break you have to catch them and say hey come back here stand still things like that move into play and that's what i'm talking about by putting you in a situation where you can reinforce what you're asking and be consistent with it that's the key to preventing color smartness do you like that yeah we got another super chat. These oh make goodness. me so excited. Well, they're bright colors and bright colors and fun. are fun. Exactly. And they're like super catchy. And I'm like, oh, well, this question needs to be answered. So Ryan Hayslip, getting my first GSP puppy on the second. Congratulations. The dog will be used for scent work in homes, vehicles, or warehouses. Does mental awesome. working eight to 12 hours a day satisfy the dog's energy depletion needs? So this is a really good question and a really interesting one because, first of all, this is really cool that you're going to be doing this with your dog. Second of all, having a puppy that is... All right, excellent connection. Now it says... And we should be back here in just a second. Let's all have a drink <laughs> with the, the bearded honey badger. I believe, according to this... Somebody we, said we're back. We're green. We're Woo-hoo! green all the way around. Excellent. I, if, if, if at first it doesn't work, unplug it and plug it back in. <sighs> yeah, now we have excellent internet again. Go figure. Cannot wait until fiber gets here. Sorry for everybody that we uh, lost there. Only about 130 people that were watching that disappeared. So Maybe it'll come back up now that they know we're back on. Hopefully. But for all of you diehard fans that didn't lose faith that we would be back in moments, let's get back to answering 
about the scent work and working eight to 12 hours on hit mental it stimulation. With a hammer. <laughs> yeah, at some point we probably will hit it with a hammer. But yes, I think that your dog working eight to 12 hours being focused and obedient um, is going to be very mentally taxing on your dog, and you're going to have to work up to their ability to focus for that amount of time um, because they have to mature, they have to learn. But working into some physical aspect side of things once, maybe twice a week, will probably be all that your dog needs to it's have a, a very fulfilled life. Yeah, yeah for sure. And again, I can't stress it enough, proper, complete socialization young, early, starting mm-hmm. from the beginning will be really important. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. so glad we're back. And our, our people are coming back. They, they said, hey, they're back. We're going to, they're starting to tune back in. So Excellent. I had a question here. It was about a video that we have done in the past here. It was one of the oh, videos that I, I, like I did. Those. Uh, a guy with the pink gun does front porch product reviews. Um, we did a video on the Orvis Tough Shell system. It is a jacket and pants set. You said, I am 5'8", trying to figure out if the medium would work for me. Now, I will say, um, uh, from a 5'8 standpoint, I think that it's probably going to be just a smidgen long, unless you have a really long torso, but... Uh, the short torso long legs uh, yeah i mean i'm saying either way i guess it's okay it's gonna be a little bit long it's gonna it's gonna be a little bit long but it's designed to be longer because it is a rain jacket so it gets the water below where the pants start and make sure that there's no overlap there um I would say I wear the medium jacket. I believe it's the smallest it comes in is medium. I've got the medium jacket, and it's... Uh, Correct. It doesn't come any smaller than medium. Uh, well, they, they pushed them. The upland shells, the soft shells had come oh. in small, and a few of the other things. They've started pushing some smalls out there um, for skinny bastards. The uh, It just kind of depends on overall how broad you are. Um, that would be a big deciding factor. But I would say for me, the medium is fairly roomy yet, uh, which gives you the ability to throw another layer. Another layer underneath that jacket is pretty beneficial. It blocks the wind. It does a good job. But what I ended up wearing was somewhere in the vicinity of thermals, uh, or a soft shell when it was pretty cold, and then the tough shell over the top that cut like 99% of the wind. And I was pretty dang roasty toasty as long as it kept moving, which is a big thing for me. I got to keep moving, and then that keeps me warm. So it's a good question. And for those of you who haven't seen it, just search uh, uh, Standing Stone Kennels on YouTube, Tough Shell, and uh, it'll come up. It's a, it's a really, really good all-weather jacket. I actually wore that jacket in Alaska while we were fishing and stayed dry underneath of it. So it's a pretty cool deal. And I had some rain gear that was from REI, and it got soaked completely through eventually. Not like right away, but it definitely didn't stay dry all day long, which would have been really nice. So this is a good question from Michael McMahon, I think. My 10-month-old lab shuts down when we put on a vest. He wears a Momarsh Versa vest. He's been wearing it for about a week. We'll do the work that's asked of him, but all his style and personality is gone. So a couple of things. One, ensure that it's fit properly and isn't overly restricting. But too tight can be a problem. Yep, too tight can be a problem. But also, ultimately, he just has to get over it. We have to allow him to realize this vest isn't hurting him, isn't do- is going to be painful or anything like that. And he just needs to become dogs that are in for formal woe training. And they feel very uncomfortable at first wearing that belly collar. And I'm, I'm equating it to a similar situation where they kind of freeze up. They don't feel comfortable moving their tails come down and their, you know, personality changes a little bit because they're unsure of this new device, if you will. Well, we just help them get used to it. We say, okay, well, we're going to not utilize the belly collar for training currently. 
but we're going to let you feel comfortable moving. We'll throw some bumpers. We'll throw some pigeons for them to chase. No, it's doing the internet thing again. Mm -hmm. This is frustrating for me. Especially because we want to do the giveaway. I think this is going to have to be our last question so that we can start trying to do that. Let me see here. I can't wait till we get uh, better yeah. internet. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it'll be good enough. And Adam just asked of a super chat. We had another question come through. With a super chat, yeah. says that we're connected with Wi-Fi, and at this point, it's calling this is internet, but Kay. it's Hopefully. nothing to write home about. And it says not receiving enough video. Oh, no data. Oh. Are we frozen again? I'm guessing we're fizzle. God dang. Cutting out. Yeah. All right. So now we're connected to my. It says we have internet. There it's coming back now. All righty. We hear you. Okay. Finally. Again. Excellent. So sorry. Got to love living in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Hopefully we don't lose it again here before we uh, finish this up. I apologize for the internet, yes. but. Uh, Appreciate you guys sticking it out with us. So what we got. Finishing up the vest question is just help your dog get used to it. Don't give up, have them wear it for a lot of different training sessions and try and do things that they, for training sessions that they will um, not be able to focus on the fact that they feel weirded out in this vest. If they love to retrieve, if they love to chase birds, if they love to go for, you know, a run off the four wheeler, do that while they're wearing the vest. Going for a run with them wearing the vest, don't want them to overheat. Mm -hmm. I just want to throw that out there. Um, if you're going for like a six hour run in their new vest, they're going to get too hot. But doing a little bit of running would potentially help them have to keep up with you and forget about the fact that, hey, this vest feels weird. So then right as we cut out, we got another person asked a super chat question. So I quick grabbed a screenshot of it so I wouldn't lose that um, from Adam Burks. I would like to do force fetch with my two-year-old GSP, but don't have room for a table. Is there any way to accomplish the same thing without the table? So people ask us this all the time because the table is a pretty big piece of equipment, a fairly big expense as well to put together. But ultimately having a way for your dog to be tethered and constrained is important because if you don't have them on a table with a cable system or something like that, and they're trying to maybe avoid a situation, they're not enjoying some part of the training, they're going to try and escape you. So having them on a leash at minimum so that they're tethered to you would be my recommendation. Um, it's also going to be more difficult to do like the toe hitch portion of things. You're going to have to rig something up on the ground to do that. It's ideally, it's not ideal. <laughs> no. Ideally get a table. Um, and you don't want too short of a table either because you need to be able to build momentum. Uh, Maybe get together with a friend that also is planning on doing similar training and say, hey, let's build a table together and you guys can share a table. Um, some, I know, groups that do uh, like testing and training will have, you know, club equipment that can be used, you know, portable tables, people use outdoor tables, things like that. So that could always be an option as well. You just got to be a handy man and build one. <laughs> I 
Did we lose connection again? Mm, no, it says we're there. It's probably a little glitchy. Hopefully everybody can hear this. Sorry if we're glitchy again, guys. It's a windy day. Yeah. The wind. But, so, people are asking, and we're, you know, even though we glitched out for a little bit, mm -hmm. we, you know, probably didn't answer quite a full hour's worth of questions, but I don't want to lose internet again and not be able to give away this cool stuff. So we're going to start the giveaway process and we're down to like 60 people watching. So you guys have all upped your odds by being, you know, loyal to stick it out. Absolutely. Okay. So remember guys, Yawa47 giveaway at gmail.com is where you're going to be sending your answers. It's pinned to the top of this chat, or still should be. Yep, it still says it is, so hopefully you guys can see that pinned email address. There are no typos in it. I double-checked it again. Good. Good to go. So, we have three questions and a tiebreaker. First question. During Yawa... Ethan mentioned, you put the bumper in the basket. What is that a reference to? Maybe you should do it in your, your voice. It puts the bumper in the basket. There you go. Good job. Good job. <laughs> that was question one, people. Uh, somebody said, we can't hear, but every few words. Hopefully that's better. It I'm going to cut out the video here and see if it streams better for y'all. Try that. See if the audio is coming through loud and clear then. Some bad connection. I mm -hmm. get it, guys. I'm sorry. We literally live in the middle of nowhere, Kansas. We have beaming internet. It's the only internet option out there. Um, we will type the questions in the chat. About that. Is that any better? Can they hear us? Can you guys hear us without the video? Didn't hear a thing. Dang. All right, go ahead and type the questions. I'm working on it. Just number them. Shoot. Better on audio. Okay. It says, voice is good, question time. Okay, good, loud and clear. We're going to type them Nobody down, but read them. Nobody needs to see us anyway. Yeah, go, we'll go ahead and read them out here, and Kat's going to type them. So question number one was, uh, what uh, movie reference am I making a joke of? Then read, read it again, because I think it was laggy and crappy at that point. It, it, it puts the bumper in the basket. Um, anyhow, next one, number two. How many times did Nix run at the Invitational? We called him a... Blank time flunky. Lovingly refer to him as our blank time invitational flunky. Then the question number three. These are all coming through. Cats t uh, typing them out here. Oh, you could have left them as one. Well, I tried, but then I it's hit okay. enter. So Sorry. they're all coming in separate. And then it says, uh, uh, for this evening, it's kind of a fun, never-ending game that we play of what... Um, you know, essentially iconic movie has Cat not actually seen, nor does she want to see. Um, I had a few different references to that, and uh, if I had video, I could show one of them again. But it was a movie that Cat had not seen, and then the tiebreaker for this evening. Um, what is and remember. Do not put your answers in the Somebody comments. Somebody already doing that? Yep, people are doing that. So don't put the answers in the comments because we aren't going to be able to look at those. We're not going to be able to keep up with those. Um, but you need to email Send us. it to Just the email. Pull up an email, yawa47giveaway at gmail.com. That's the email address. We can check that after we finish this up. And then uh, we, will be giving, we will be giving out... Prizes to the winners. And then uh, the tiebreaker, if this tiebreaker is needed, it is, what is Thunder's full registered name? 
I will give you a hint. It starts standing stones. And then there's more. And then there's more. What is his registered name? All right, guys, those are the questions. We're going to bop into this email address here and see them coming through. We're getting lots of people sending emails already. Awesome. So you guys are following directions. Like I said, if you put it in the comments, the answers in the comments, we aren't going to look at those. So I won't be considering you for the giveaway, unfortunately. It's too hard to scroll through and keep up with those. And um, this way, all of them will be in the same email. Yep, keep them all in the same keep email. Keep them in the same email. So if you send an email with only one of the answers, resend it with all of the answers, including the tiebreaker. Because otherwise, again, it's going to be really hard to keep track of because... Yeah, just one email numbered one through three, tiebreaker at the bottom. Yep, yep, yep. All right, let's see here. We still got uh, garbage interweb connection tonight. Sorry, guys. And I also want to mention if you guys sent an email early on asking questions to the email because you saw the email tag at the top, unfortunately, we are also not going to be replying and answering to those uh, if you guys didn't get your questions answered this evening and you still do want them answered, uh, definitely hit us up at patreon.com slash standing stone kennels. It's where we're getting to people's questions on the daily. Um, Kat and I are both jumping all over those. You can do setup on a couple different tiers, one of which is uh, just questioning back and forth on the, the custom message platform there. The other would be actually sending us videos of your sessions. You can actually set up in the next tier up phone calls if you prefer, if you don't like the technology game quite so much and you just want to talk to somebody. And then the last would be the live tier. And the live tier is absolutely fantastic. Allows us to watch live what you're doing and help critique and guide you in your training sessions. And I actually did my first live with a patron the other day. We don't get a ton of those people, and Ethan has been doing a lot of them, but as we've been growing our Patreon community, Ethan and I have been having to tag team those a little bit more, and I did my first one, and it was so awesome to watch how that really actually worked in real time and how well it really actually worked. All right, so everything is in. And uh, what do we got? Just if it doesn't have all the answers, just delete it. If it doesn't have the right answers, just delete it. Okay. And we'll sort down through. Go ahead of the way. You can help go through them too. What do we got? Gmail. Thank you guys all for playing and for sticking it out with us, though, because it was definitely a little frustrating tonight for everybody, I'm sure. I get kicked in and out not being able to hear what's going on. should work now. All right. Got a few that are uh, getting stuff done, right? Yes. So far, though, like the tiebreaker hasn't really worked. Nobody's gotten it. But people have gotten the other three right, so depending, we may have to throw out another tiebreaker if we don't get somebody that gets... All y'all's oh, answer. Man. 
All right. Ooh. We have one. Oh. Is this the one you saw? Uh-uh. We have more than one. So can we star those or something? I did. They're right here. You just How hit the you? star button. Oh, there's a star button. Got it. Right there. Mm-hmm. God, we got multiple in the it's got it all right. So, do we need... Oh, my God. <laughs> That's awesome, though, that people are that in tune. Holy hell. We literally got... Uh, One or two answers right. Well, we have 70 more emails to go through. Just keep <laughs> coming in. All right, guys. Time, I think what we we're going to have to... do a time cut off. Well, no, 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 that's or, fine. I think what we're going to have to do, but, though, is just bot back in with the uh, the winner. We can throw it in the, the we'll comments. We'll have to do that. the, so we'll have to take all the people that got it right, even with the tiebreaker, and mm -hmm. then put it in a random thingy. Yeah, we'll have to pick somebody that way, and then what we'll end up doing for y'all is throwing it in the comment of the actual video. It'll go live here just as soon as we finish this live stream. It'll be listed on our channel there, and we will tag the winner, winner, chicken dinner. Uh, who got it all right and who wins the, the random deal. Does that work? Okay. Yeah, because this Herbert. is impressive. Thank you all for playing. Thank you all for being with us. Thank uh, you for your patience. I believe uh, what we have to say tonight is we're out of internet <laughs> and uh, we're out of time. So we will get this sorted through. We'll get the winner out and then we'll be touching base with you next week. Thanks, y'all.